Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel, The Reader Teacher. My name's Scott. In these coming soon videos, I'll be sharing my most anticipated children's books releases for each month. This video is Series 2, Episode 10 of Coming Soon, and it previews the upcoming books for the month of October 2022. You can find my previous month's Coming Soon videos here. I'll be going through them in release date order, and where they have the same release date, then they'll be alphabetically by title. If you just want to hear about a specific book, then make sure to use the timestamps in the description below. I hope this video helps you to discover more children's books to add to your TBRs, and I'll be doing more monthly videos like this one throughout the year. So make sure to leave me a like, hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. All the links to the books that I mention in this video will also be in the description box below. So let's take a look at the books. Does the Loch Ness Monster really exist? Whatever happened to the crew of the Mary Celeste? And where exactly are the Hanging Gardens of Babylon? Get ready to be amazed as you uncover the world's greatest mysteries in the Big Book of Mysteries by Tom Adams and Yasin Mimura, out on the 6th of October. From Bigfoot to the Bermuda Triangle and alien abductions to haunted houses, this book will explain the extraordinary, unless the extraordinary can't be explained, of course. Then you'll just have to make up your own mind. With atmospheric artwork, compelling case studies, and a seriously standout neon cover, this promises to be a haunting collection of mysteries that you won't be able to put down. Thanks Nosy Crow for the finished copy. Blow a Kiss, Catch a Kiss is the latest book by new UK children's laureate Joseph Coelho and illustrator Nicola Killen out on the 6th of October. This beautiful anthology features 44 short poems designed to be shared together and are split into topical sections, such as All About Me, out and about, what do I feel, and at home. Babies and toddlers will love these poems that are all about children just like them, because they are fun and perfect for sharing everyday feelings and experiences. Thanks Anderson Press for the finished copy. What is it that makes you want to read a book? Well hopefully Richard Ayoade's children's book debut, the book that no one wanted to read, out on the 6th of October, will give you some, if not all of the answers, in a way that's silly, funny, and typically Ayoade. Have you ever thought about how it feels to be a book? To be left under a whiffy pant pile or shelved forever collecting dust? To have your pages bent backwards or your spine broken? What if you don't have a sparkly unicorn or dragon adorning your cover? Who will pick you out of the bookshop then? Illustrated by Tor Freeman, it tells the story of the sadly neglected book that no one wanted to read. But can its destiny change when it finally meets the right reader? Spoiler alert, yes. Big thanks Walker Books for sending me a finished copy. I love books about books, and Bookworms by Neander Fode, former Birmingham Young Poet Laureate, and Joel Avellino out on the 6th of October, is the perfect introduction to the vital need for every child to see themselves in the books they read. What does a book mean to those who search for acceptance and understanding? A place to find friends, feel part of a family, or to be your true self. A good book takes you to new worlds, the right one shows you you can exist in this one. So for all bookworms, lovers of books, the world is waiting for you. Thanks Anderson Press for the gorgeous finished copy. Cappy and the Whale by Katerina Babkina, Julia Palupchatina and Hannah Lelive out on the 6th of October was originally published in Ukraine in 2015 and is now being published in English for the first time. When eight-year-old Cappy discovers a whale swimming outside of his bedroom window, he's fair to say he's quite surprised. Given how long he spent in hospital, Cappy has had plenty of time to read a lot of books on animals and he's never heard of a whale that can fly. What with his leukemia, Cappy's used to not being allowed to do things he wants, like eating sweets, playing with dogs, or roaming too far from his protective family. So he's delighted when the amazing whale not only speaks to him, but asks him to join him for a ride in the sky. And soon Cappy and the whale are the best of friends, and together they will go on an amazing journey of imagination, hope, and curiosity. Thanks Puffin for the beautiful finished copy. Also out on the 6th of October is the Faber Book of Bedtime Stories, a stunning collection of brand new bedtime stories which celebrate all the best things in life and promote modern day messages of inclusivity, acceptance and bravery in the face of adversity. Illustrated throughout by the fabulous Sarah McIntyre, it contains tales by the very best of Faber talent and some of the biggest names in contemporary children's fiction, from Emma Carroll and Natasha Farrant to Kieran Larwood and Rashmi Sudesh Pandit. Huge thanks Faber for the finished copy. 
When Carl visits the Peak District with his parents to try and recover from the fallout of a horrific accident in the haunted hills by Burley Doherty out on the 6th of October, he becomes caught up in the mysterious tale of the lost lad. Are the hills actually haunted, or is Carl being chased by his own demons? As past and present collide, Carl must learn to come to terms with the loss of his best friend Jack and find a way to move on. Thanks you clan for sending me a finished copy. It's winter 1601 in Honesty and Lies by Eloise Williams out on the 6th of October, in which we journey back to London in Tudor times. In this dual narrative story told by its two main characters, Honesty and Alice, we learn that Elizabeth I's palace is a place where nothing is as it seems. When Honesty travels to London, she is taken aback by the stink and the state of the streets, and she soon realises that she needs her wits about her to keep herself safe here. After fleeing from an attacker, she runs into Alice, a girl of about the same age, who knows how to look after herself and takes a shine to honesty, promising her shelter and friendship at a time when she most needs it. Life seems good for honesty, who uses her storytelling to her advantage, but can Alice be trusted in this tale of intrigue, scheming and plots, set in the spellbinding world of the Elizabethan court? Thanks Firefly Press for the proof copy. Journey through India and explore its incredible diversity in the richly illustrated India, Incredible India, out on the 6th of October. Written by award-winning author Jasbinda Bilan, with detailed artwork by Nina Chakrabarti, this is a joyful celebration of the country and its vibrant culture and fascinating history. The book divides India by region, expertly capturing its unique mix of the modern and the traditional, exploring its geography, its food, its customs and its stunning landmarks, from the skyscrapers of New Delhi to the banks of the Holy River Ganges. Containing a delightful mix of friendly, informative text and colourful illustrations, the information is framed within a story about a little girl and her grandmother, giving the reader a personal introduction to an incredible country. Big thanks Walker Books for the stunning finished copy. From debut author illustrator Chloe Savage comes the search for the giant arctic jellyfish out on the 6th of October. A beautifully detailed adventure into the unknown, sure to captivate the imagination of young explorers, it introduces us to Dr Morley, who is about to embark on a quest to the northernmost tip of the world, to discover a creature that everyone talks about but nobody has ever seen, the giant arctic jellyfish. After years of research and hard graft, she gathers together a highly trained crew and a boat full of specialist equipment and sets sail for the vast icy scapes of the Arctic. But will she find what she is searching for? Or will it find her? Big thanks Walker Books for the gorgeous finished copy. It's always a delight to see another book by the Queen of Historical Children's Fiction, as she's affectionately known, being published, and this is what's happening with The Tale of Truthwater Lake by Emma Carroll, coming out on the 6th of October. In this time slip story it's the near future, and Britain is having yet another heatwave. Of course, the government has put in the normal curfews for this kind of weather, and shops are forced to shut again. For Polly, it's the sort of heat that makes her do wild, out-of-character things just to cool down, like facing her fear of deep water, essential when she and her brother have been sent to their aunt's eco-lakeside house for the summer. But Truthwater Lake is beginning to dry up. As the water level diminishes, a lost village emerges. Swimming over the rooftops at midnight, Polly dives down and is suddenly able to breathe, to hear church bells and birdsong. Has she discovered an underwater gateway to the past? Thanks Faber for the beautiful hardback finished copy. Next is the long-awaited Tiger, the newest novel by S.F. Said, author of such books as Varjak Poor and Phoenix, and illustrated by Dave McKean, which hits our shelves on the 6th of October. Set in a strange alternate world where the British Empire is still a cruel ruling force, we meet a young boy called Adam, who has uncovered a mysterious mythical animal in a rubbish dump in London. The tiger is in danger, and Adam, along with his friend Zadie, are determined to help it. However, they soon realise that it isn't just the tiger's life at stake, because the world they live in is also on the precipice of darkness. Can the tiger show them how to harness the great powers they have within them? SF believes that it's his best book yet, having been nine years in the making, and I can say that from having an early read of it, that it is well worth the wait. Huge thanks David Ficklin Books for the stunning finished hardback copy. Dieter Brown, well-known non-fiction author illustrator, is back with Wild Animals of the World out on the 6th of October. Our world is full of wonderful animals, from the brightly coloured mandrills in the rainforests of Africa to the majestic humpback whales in the icy waters of the Antarctic. 
and through his beautiful and colourful illustrations, readers will be dazzled by the giraffes and elephants in Africa, koalas and kangaroos in Australia, huge blue whales in the open oceans and many more. These animals, some endangered, remind us that nature is incredible and that we need its diversity more than ever. Big thanks Fly and I Books for the finished copy. I've been a really big fan of Lucy Hope's dark gothic star writing since her debut Fledgling landed last year, choosing it as my fiction book of the month for November 2021 in my monthly must reads, and I'm delighted to see her second book, Wren, on the way on the 6th of October. Set on the island of Anglesey in North Wales, Wren's family has lived in an ancient castle in the mountains near the sea for generations, where Wren loves to be busy inventing things, and her father loves to be busy disapproving of the things his daughter does. But the castle, where the cold never leaves, the wind whistles through it and the walls sing to her, contains a mystery, and as she is drawn further into it, she realises the answer lies in the very foundations of her home, foundations that are being shaken to their core. Thanks Nosy Crow for the finished copy. Out on the 13th of October is 50 Times Football Changed the World by Gary Lineker, Ivor Badil and Erica Salcedo, a collection of empowering and extraordinary stories that have inspired Gary throughout his career and changed the game and sometimes the world forever. From pioneering players, trailblazing managers and incredible tales both on and off the pitch, this book contains everything you ever wanted to know about the beautiful game. Have you heard about the match that took place between enemy soldiers in no man's land during World War I? Or about the women's team who showed the world that football truly is for everyone? And I bet you didn't know about the team that won a match without scoring a single goal? Thanks Puffin for the finished copy. Adam Wins the Internet by former Blue Peter presenter and YouTuber Adam B and illustrated by James Lancet out on the 13th of October tells the story of Adam and his unlikely ambition of becoming a superstar YouTube sensation which incredibly becomes a reality. There's nothing more that he has wanted than to be a successful YouTuber, but it's always seemed an absolute never going to happen in a million years impossibility, not least because he thinks he's a penniless, cameraless nobody with only one friend. But when a pop-up ad appears and promises to make all his dreams come true, he is thrown into a world of fame, fortune and fancy TVs. What more could he want? But Adam's luck may be running out. When he accepts a mission to reach 1 million subscribers in one year, it becomes clear that he has bitten off way more than he can chew and his life becomes one epic fail after another. Big thanks Bloomsbury for sending me a hardback copy. Science isn't about knowing lots of facts or getting the right answer all the time. Science is about asking questions. And the bedtime book of impossible questions by Isabel Thomas and Aaron Cushley out on the 13th of October is jam-packed full of them and offers answers to the most bamboozling questions and queries that you can think of. From science-based ones such as Can I Touch a Rainbow? and maths ones like how long would it take to count to infinity, to other weird, wacky and wonderful wonderings, this is the perfect book to dive into, to define, debunk and demystify the trickiest thoughts, and to see if there really is an answer to everything. Thanks Bloomsbury for the finished copy. What if all the stories were real? Well that's what two ordinary kids are about to find out, as they embark on one extraordinary and epic adventure, in the Book of Legends by Lenny Henry and Keenan Farrell, out on the 13th of October. Bran and Fran love living with their mum, who is the storyteller at the Once Upon a Wow bookstore in their small Midlands town. But when mum goes missing and her stories turn out to be a portal to another world, they're going to have a huge magical adventure on their hands. Luckily, they have Wilma, the wizard's wife, and Zack, the wisecracking zebracorn, to help them on their journey. And they're going to need help, because there are evil princes, mud monsters and viking armies all standing in their way. Thanks Macmillan for sending me a hardback copy. Children of the Stone City out on the 13th of October is the first children's novel in over a decade from Beverly Naidu, award-winning author of books such as Journey to Joburg. Set in a world where Adam and Layla and their friend Zack live under the ruling class, this is a novel about justice, privilege and the power of the young to strive for change. When Adam and Layla's father dies unexpectedly, their mother faces losing her permit to live in the Stone City, with deportation to where she was born. But before music-loving Adam can implement his plan to save Mama, Zack is arrested for a bold prank that goes wrong, with far-reaching repercussions for them all. Thanks HarperCollins for the hardback copy. Welcome to a world of fairy tales as you've never seen them before, 
in A Fairy Tale for Everyone, edited by Baldassar M. Nagy and illustrated by Lilla Balesk, out on the 13th of October. In this collection that was originally published in Hungary, with the inclusion of LGBTQ plus characters, sparked political controversy. There are 17 short stories that take new and familiar fairy tales, including Cinderella, Snow White and Bambi, and reimagines them in a contemporary and inclusive light, celebrating all ethnicities, genders and sexualities. Find fresh tales of brave princesses who defeat terrifying monsters and kind-hearted princes love to sew or sing, and where magic can be found in the most mundane of places. Thanks, Farshaw, for the finished copy. Ghostlight by Kenneth Oppel, out on the 13th of October, promises to be a fresh and terrifying take on the ghost story that's perfect for fans of Neil Gaiman. For his summer job, Gabe tells the same ghostly story to the people every day, when he gives the ghost tour on Toronto Island. He tries to make it scary enough to satisfy the tourist, but he doesn't actually believe in ghosts. That is, until events take a terrifying turn when he accidentally summons the spirit of a dead girl called Rebecca Strand and he finds himself face to face with her. The true story of her death is far more terrifying than any ghost tale Gabe has told. Rebecca reveals that her father was a member of the Order, a secret society devoted to protecting the world from the wakeful and wicked dead. Malevolent spirits like Viker, the ghost responsible for their deaths. But the order has disappeared, and Viker's ghost is growing ever stronger. Now, Gabe and his friends must find a way to stop Viker before they all become lost souls. Thanks, Guppy Books, for the finished copy. Leon the Extraordinary by Jamar Nicholas, the first graphic novel in this action packed and joyously funny series, out on the 13th of October reminds us that when it comes to being a hero, you just need to believe in yourself. That is because where Leon lives, superheroes and supervillains are commonplace. So how does an ordinary kid like Leon, who has no superpowers himself, become the superhero he wants to be? Well, when all his classmates suddenly become obsessed with a new phone app that turns them into zombies, Leon gets his chance to prove that using his brain and following his heart can save the day. Thanks Scholastic for the finished copy. In The Mystery of Raspberry Hill by Eva France, out on the 13th of October, 12-year-old Stina knows she will die someday. She has tuberculosis, but not enough money for treatment. So when she is sent to remote Raspberry Hill sanatorium, she can't believe her luck. She gets to ride in a real motor car to the hospital, which looks like a magnificent castle hidden deep in the forest. But as she begins to explore the long, echoey corridors of her eerie new home, she begins to suspect that the building is concealing a dark secret. How did the old East Wing burn down? Why doesn't her mother reply to any of her letters? And what are all the nurses so afraid of? Can she solve the mystery of Raspberry Hill whilst edging closer to the truth as well as terrible danger? Thanks Pushkin Press for the finished copy. Another one out on the 13th of October is the newest out of this world adventure, Space Band by Tom Fletcher, best-selling author and musician in McFly. Bringing together two of Tom's greatest passions in music and space, it tells the story of the worst band who were beamed up to space to play an intergalactic version of the Battle of the Bands contest they were meant to be playing at their school in front of their friends. Competing against alien bands from every galaxy, this has turned into much more of a task than they originally thought. And if they don't win, they might never make it home again. So can the worst band on Earth become the best band in the universe? Thanks Puffin for the hardback copy. Timid, out on the 13th of October, is the newest picture book by Harry Woodgate, creator of the brilliant Grandad's Camper, which explores how to overcome shyness in a gentle way and is a warm reminder that we can do anything we put our minds to. In this one we see Timmy, who absolutely loves to perform, but only when there isn't an audience. Most of the time they struggle with their shy inner lion, who seems determined to keep them out of the spotlight. As Timmy's classmates begin to prepare for the school play, Timmy longs to be a part of the performance. However, feelings of shyness and fear threaten to stop Timmy from doing what they love. With a bit of help from their friend Nia and a whole lot of bravery, will Timmy ever be able to strike up the courage to perform on stage? Hazel Hill is going to win this one by Maggie Horn out on the 18th of October is a strong-hearted story about fighting for justice in the school corridors. Girls in Hazel's school are being harassed by an anonymous person online, someone who seems to know all about their insecurities and dreams, and Hazel is sure she knows who it is. With no one willing to stand up and face the bully, 
How will Hazel be able to prove her suspicions? After all, she's just a girl. This funny, feminist and contemporary book confronts bullying, both online and in person, to give children the power to stand up for themselves and speak out against harassment. Thanks Firefly for the proof copy. Out on the 25th of October, You Don't Know What War Is, The Diary of a Young Girl from Ukraine by Yeva Skalietska is a powerful insight into what conflict is like through the eyes of a child, an essential read for older children. It follows 12 days in Ukraine that changed 12-year-old Yeva's life forever. She was woken in the early hours to the terrifying sounds of shelling. Russia had invaded Ukraine and her beloved Kharkiv home was no longer the safe haven it should have been. It was while she and her granny were forced to seek shelter in a damp, cramped basement that Yeva decided to write down her story. And it is a story that the world needs to hear, where she records what is happening hour by hour as she seeks safety and travels from Kharkiv to Dublin. Each eye-opening diary entry is supplemented by personal photographs, excerpts of messages between Yeva and her friends, and daily headlines from around the world, while three beautifully detailed maps help the reader track Yeva and her granny's journey through Europe. It's a cold winter during the Great Frost of 1683 in the Miraculous Sweetmakers, The Frost Fair by Natasha Hastings and Alex T. Smith out on the 27th of October, where Thomasina and Anne are the best of friends, one running her father's sweet shop and the other the apprentice at the family apothecary, and together they sell their goods on the frozen River Thames. When a family tragedy turns Thomasina's world upside down, she is drawn to a mysterious conjurer and the enchanted Frost Fair. But soon the world of Father Winter threatens to claim everything she holds dear. Will they be able to solve the magical mysteries that surround them? Thanks HarperCollins for the proof copy. To walk to, to talk to, to cry and rely on. People will always need people. From the creators of Nature Trail, Benjamin Zephaniah and Nyla I, comes this uplifting picture book poem, People Need People, out on the 27th of October about the power of people and the importance of connecting with others, in which it reminds us all to be kind to one another. Thanks Hachette for the finished copy. What do you think, out on the 27th of October, is the third children's book by best-selling mindset author and two-time Olympian Matthew Syed that will help readers to find their voice, flex their social superpowers and speak up with kindness and confidence? Practical and positive, readers will also discover what is influencing their ideas, from peer pressure to fake news, learn how to form and challenge opinions, and how to debate their views with empathy, so they can grow into awesome adults who can listen, be listened to, and can agree to disagree while still being friends. Children have loads of incredible thoughts and ideas that can change the world, for the better, and the world deserves to hear your voice. So, what do you think? Thanks Hachette for the finished coffee. To end the month is Ember Oak and the Terrible Tomorrows by Jenny Moore, out on the 28th of October. All the best stories and adventures start with a knock at the door. Or the thwump of a dragon's tail at the entrance to a cave, in the case of Ember Oak. But then nothing about Ember's story is normal. From the scales on her arms and legs, to the shocking discovery that she hatched out of a dragon's egg. Even more shocking is the news that an evil sorcerer is after her dragon blood, and will do anything to get his hands on it. Can Ember keep herself safe, or will her loved ones pay the price? Thanks Maverick for the finished copy. So these are the books I'm most excited about reading this month. If you enjoyed watching, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel below. As always, keep reading, and I'll see you in the next video.